Hello everyone. You are welcome to MME 305, Engineering Materials, Structure and Properties. This is our first class in this course. And today we'll be taking on topic one, which is on basic structure of materials. I am Professor M.O.H. Amuda. Today is July 25th, 2023. In this topic one, which is about basic structures of materials, we shall learn about crystallography and its relationship to structure in metallic and non-metallic materials. Why do these materials behave the way they do? This will take us to the concept of lattice parameters. What are they? and how they are used to index crystals. We will then go on to Miller Index, Bravi Lattice, and we wrap up the topic by looking at directions and planes with regards to structure of materials. Crystallography. In material science, like in any other discipline, particularly mineralogy, crystallography describes the study of arrangement of atoms, crystals in three dimensions. The crystals that we have they just don't take up the position that they take. Their positions, the way they are arranged, are shown in this representative image here. It's a function of the fundamental bonding systems that, this, that we have in atoms. And this, whether you have metallic, electrovalent, or covalent, this is what determines the structural makeup of the materials that we have. And this structural makeup influences the behavior or properties of the material. If your material is going to be conducting, it, the material does not, just does not decide that it wants to be conducting. It's a function of the structural makeup of the material and that takes us to having some materials that we classify as crystalline and some that we classify as non-crystalline e.g metals ceramics some polymers or glass materials this arrangement that we have in crystals is a function of the geometry which is represented by with respect to the three principal axes x y z if you look at this this could be taken to be our if this is taken as the reference axis this is negative uh, this is positive side or negative side y this could be taken as positive side x and uh, this could be taken as uh, positive or negative side z so this a uh, these are the reference points and from here you can build up other other part of the structure as well so here you can take it as point of symmetry uh, as it were the, the the crystals we have the crystal arrangement we have in the la in the previous slide came from the concept of 
crystallization. And in crystallization, it is the process of the formation of solid crystals coming out. The technical term often used is precipitation. Coming out from solution as a result of change in the environmental variable. What are these variables? Temperature and pressure, not volume. Temperature and, and pressure. So, crystallization is essentially a chemical solid liquid separation technique in which you have mass transfer of a solute from the liquid solution to a pure solid crystalline phase. When this occurs, we also call that uh, crystallization. But for us, in material science, materials engineering, in metallurgy or related discipline, crystallization is essentially the development of solid from liquid in a simple uh, uh, in a simple definition for us to, to, uh, to appreciate. Typical example, you put water in, your, in a jar or in, in a glass cup and you put it in, your, in a chiller, e.g. your freezing compartment. After a while, the liquid water as by freezing we turn to what we all know as ice. This, that is a typical example of development of solid from, from liquid. This is a typical representation. When you look at this, this is the entropy of the system and this is the temperature. This is temperature increasing. When you look at it from here, this is our crystal. This is our liquid position. Okay? This is our liquid position. So by melting, the solid when you have here becomes liquid. And by cooling, again, it becomes solid. What we notice is that the transition from liquid to solid in crystalline material is very, very sudden. You have a very sharp differential between the liquid phase and this, this is the interfacial energy barrier that must be uh, provided for our solid, which we call crystal, crystal to develop from liquid. Whereas, in amorphous solid, what we call super cool liquid, you do not have such drastic transformation. Rather, it is a gradual process and it is locked up. You will see that this is not continuous. So what that implies is that your crystals do not have the opportunity to take a particular position. They are locked up. They are locked up. So that is what makes them amorphous, unlike what we have here. This kind of arrangement is found in glass or some polymers. And that is why for such material, you don't talk of melting point. What do we talk? We, we, we rather than talking of a melting point, we refer to what we call TG, the glass transition uh, temperature. Arising from precipitation of solids from liquid, which give us the 3D arrangement that we, we, we had in the previous slide. So that is what constitutes a uh, crystal structure. A definitive arrangement or a definitive positioning of atoms in space, we can pick, we can identify at any point
point in time, crystal or atom A is at this position. Atom B is at this position. Atom C is at this position. That is what we call definitive arrangement or positioning of atoms. Unlike what we have in amorphous uh, solid, you cannot get that definitive uh, arrangement. So in crystallography, crystal structure is a unique arrangement of atoms or molecules in a crystalline liquid or solid such that there is a pattern of that arrangement and a set of atoms are arranged in a particular way and a lattice exhibiting long range order and uh, symmetry. As a result of that, a typical representation we can look at sodium chloride structure. We should recall that we said the crystal structure that our materials exhibit, be it metallic, ceramic, or whatever you, are built upon the fundamental bonding system that they exhibit. I want to illustrate this with the sodium chloride structure. Don't forget, we said in crystal structure, we said in crystal structure, there is a, regu a regular pattern of arrangement of atoms in, what, in space. They take a particular position. Let's pick sodium ions, for instance, here. Let's pick sodium ions. Sodium apology, there was a power failure, so I think uh, you may not, you may see my environment becoming dark. Just bear with me. If you pick sodium ions here, which is represented by color blue and chloride ion which is represented by color green you will notice that at every position of chloride ion the next you will see at every position of two chloride ion you will notice that a sodium ion Inter is interfacing is in between these two chloride ions when you go further that is the same arrangement you will see here when you come here that is the same arrangement you will see here when you come here that is the same arrangement you will see here the same arrangement the bottom plan is the same arrangement here is also the same arrangement so you will see that the position <coughs> excuse me the position the position of sodium ion is constant is regular is repetitive and it is in three dimension so that is why in crystalline states you must have three key attributes available one the position is fixed it is regular it is repetitive and that is also repeated in three dimensions if you look at if you take this as a reference point or anyone here we take as reference points along this axis it is it is blue in between two greens if you take it along this axis it is blue in between two greens if you take it along this axis it is two uh, uh, blue in between two greens so when you have this kind of arrangement we we say the material or such 
uh, structure, such structure exhibits a crystalline state. And what happens is that at this crystalline state that we have here, that is the minimum energy position for that material. And it is the minimum energy that provides stability for the materials in terms of bonding forces attraction. So you now have it in a repetitive spatial arrangement. You, if you pick this plan, the topmost plan, you can now see if you go a crystal position down, you will see it repeated. If you pick the face here, the same thing. If you pick here, is the same thing. If you pick towards into the into the screen, is the same thing. So you now see that majority of solids that we have that develop precipitate from liquid, we exhibit this kind of structure, repetitive regular array in three-dimensional array of structure and this is what we found in our metals and alloys and this is what we found also in our ceramics now we also have some of these in in some polymers therefore for amorphous you will not have this kind of uh, structure in such materials that is we are saying that in non-crystalline solid they do not maintain a periodic array or a periodic order that we have in here based on what we have just said we can now we can now progress to identify the state in which we have our materials. Materials can be broadly in form, in terms of their states, can be broadly classified into two: amorphous and crystalline. Within the classification of <coughs> crystalline, we have two classifications and one is single crystal the other one is polycrystalline material in poly in single crystal there is no multi dimensional arrangement it's just a simple space like x y direction whereas in polycrystalline you have x y you have y z you have uh, x x z you have all other combinations of possible and that is what this is trying to show this is our plane this is another configuration this is another configuration here so you have materials in randomly oriented in space in three dimension that is what we call polycrystalline that is a material existing in more than one crystal or containing more than one crystal or in more than one crystalline state this is what we found in most commercial uh, metals or alloy this basically you find this in our whiskers and this you find in glass or some uh, polymers generally the arrangement of our crystals in 3d in three dimension as we have explained before are based on patterns and these patterns are located upon the point of a lattice which is an array of points repeating periodically in three dimensions invariably 
This point can be thought of as forming identical tiny boxes called unit cells that fill the space of the lattice. What is that lattice? When you talk of a lattice, you are not saying on anything other than space positioning. When you, in that wise, you have what we call the baseline. Don't forget that we said that the the lattice, the patterns are the, are repetitive, such that it just look as if you have a tiny bit which is the model now repeating itself over and over to build up a very big structure and you will see that in our next slide so you will see this this is a typical example of what i'm saying you can see this is a three by three planar structure up here three by three this is three but this full structure I can make it from here. One, two, three, four. Okay? I can make it from here. This one, two, three, four. I can repeat it here. One, two, three, four. I can repeat it here. One, two, three, four. I can repeat it here. One, two, three, four. I can repeat it here. One, two, three, four. I can go up here. One, two, three, four. So you now see that for us, to build up this full three by three three dimensional structure, you just need this one, two, three, four, and then you repeat it. This is what is represented here. You can repeat it and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So we can, because you can build this full structure from here, just using this one, simple baseline, we call it the unit cell. In essence, the unit cell is that smallest lattice unit that contains all the elements of symmetry of the crystal. You can build this from here. This is what the unit cell is, is, is all about. It is the foundation. And you do that by cascading. Put another layer. Put another layer in the vertical direction. You can put another layer in the horizontal direction. You can put another layer in a direction orthogonal to both vertical and horizontal, which we call the Z direction. And at the end of the day, you can build this is still first side this is the first side and this is so this is what we call the uh, unit in itself now how do we characterize our unit cell that we call the lattice it comes with a parameter don't forget that for us to define this let us assume that I am interested in this position, and this is my reference point. How do I index this? This point is at certain position from my reference point, okay? And any other point also is similar like that. That is one. So what is the relative position of any other point here with respect to the the reference point point number one point number two do they make any angular relationship with respect to the reference point so you have x y z principal axis what angles do they make between each other and how far are they from the reference point in order to determine this the crystal chemistry of crystal physics uses six parameters. Three position, 
vectors and the angle that, that exists between them. And these position vectors are designated A, B, C with a common origin that is reference. And the relevant or corresponding angles are alpha, beta, gamma. What are we saying? For us to completely designate, annotate any lattice, you need the lattice positioning A, B, C. You also need the included angle alpha, beta, gamma. When we have these six parameters, we can define all crystal systems that we have, which are about seven in number. So, if you look at this, if this place is taken as our reference point, this is our x-axis, this is our y-axis, this is our z-axis, or we can say this is our x-axis, this is our y-axis, and this is our z-axis. The angle between x and y, between x and z rather, the angle between x and z is angle bit beta. The one between x and y is gamma, and the one between y and z is alpha. So that is the way the angle angular designation is done in crystal uh, physics or crystal chemistry. And based on this, we can identify some common uh, uh, crystal system. Simple cubic, face center cubic, and body center cubic. This I will discuss in, uh, in, in greater detail and specificity in the in another class. The, the unit cell, as I explained, are stuck in three dimensional space. That when we stack them in three dimensional space, they describe the arrangement of atoms in the crystal. And that unit cell is given by its lattice parameters. As I said, which are the length of the cell edges and the angles between between them the the positions of the atoms inside the unit cells are described by the set of atomic position x i y i z i measured from that lattice point that is from your reference up uh, reference point what if you are looking at a particular if you are looking at a particular crystal what is its position from at point X from the reference point? What is the position at point Y from the reference point? What is the position at point Z from the reference point? This is, I'm making a, 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 a more specific illustration now. When you look at this, you can see this is X, this is Y, this is Z. So for X, we represent it by cell H A. For Y, we represent it by cell H B. And for Z, we, uh, we represent it by cell H C. Depending on the combination of A, B, C, alpha, beta, gamma, we can have seven crystal systems. For instance, if A, if all the cell edges are equal, if all these are equal we have what you call a cube not only that not just a b c being equal all the angles must also be equal and they must be 90. when you have a being equals to b b being equals to c such that alpha is equals to beta is, <coughs> is equals to gamma and this is equals to 90. 
you have a cubic structure like what we have here and that is how we determine all these that we all these crystal systems that we have here now based on this we introduce a concept that we call atomic packing factor because the crystals are considered to be spherical in the in in the in in this unit cell which is considered to be a cube the number of atoms that you have in that cube is divided by that unit cells give you the atomic packing factor this parameter that we call APF is used in determining in determining the ability of your crystals for alloying so your crystal is considered to be a sphere and the volume for a sphere is 4 over 3 pi r cube the number of this sphere number of those crystals those balls that we have in the in the in, in the in the in the cube you, you call it n and what is the volume of a cube is the volume of a cube is length times breadth times height and don't forget that we said the length is equal to the breadth is equal to the height so if you are representing it with <coughs> cell, para cell edge parameter a it means a l is equal to b b is equal to h which means a is equal to a is equal to a is equal to b is equal to c and that is how you get a cube and for mass density you have this is the Avogadro's number molar mass the number of it then divided by the the volume this is how you characterize your your materials or your crystals as it were and this now take us to another concept that we call the linear and planar densities which is defined as the number of atoms per unit length whose center lie on the direction vector for a specific crystallographic direction so the number of atoms on that direction vector multiply uh, divided by the length of the direction uh, vector and that is what we call ld this is what uh, i will give an illustration here this is considered to be a cube and you have this is uh, if you look at this structure crystal structure you will have crystal position at the edges you now have extra one at the faces one two three four five six so if you look at a b c d e f this is the structure that you have here that's what you have here that's what we represent here if you look at that you can now determine what the linear or what we call the linear density is which is number of atoms per this that you have in this plane this is the number of atoms that you have in this plane then divided by the area of the plane this is the so you need to know this length we already know this as a but we don't know this so how do we find this because this is a right angle uh if you look at it it has formed a right angle triangle okay you now use your Pythagoras theorem and that is why they are doing this which is a times fd where is our fd this is fd fd here is the same thing as ac and ad here is the same thing as ccf so when you look this is a this is a so if, if you want to know ac it will now be a square plus a square which is equal to uh, 2a squared then you find the root and that is how we get uh, that so for us to know the number of atoms here so you now know that a is equal to 2r squared 2 okay so you need to know the radius 
which is R. Because this thing, they are touching each other. So R, this is the center from A to this edge of the circle here is R. But from this is full circle, right? So this is the diameter length. So this is 2R. If you look at C, it's also from the center to the edge. So this is another R. So you have 1R plus 2R plus another R, making 4R. So that is how they got this 4R squared. Multiply by 2, it gives you 8R squared. So area of plane will now be this multiplied by this. And that is how they got 8R squared into root 2. Because this is A, this is A root, this side is A uh, root 2. So when you now want to get the planar density, you now add 1 quarter plus half plus 1 quarter plus 1 quarter plus half plus 1. Where do we get 1 quarter? This is it. This is one quarter. How many, how many cells do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. How did we get one quarter? Look at this point A. This particular crystal is shared with this side, right? That is one. This particular crystal is also shared. With this, that is two. Do we agree? This particular crystal is also shared with this, that is three. And this particular crystal is also shared by this, that is four. So, which means for this, you have this, for this, you have this being shared by four other corner atoms. So, which means here, is just one over over four and when you come here this is one over four this is also one over, over four this is also one this is also one over four this is also one over four so you have one over four one one over four two one over four three one over four four so that is why you have one two three four now look at this face center here this face center that you have here <coughs> don't forget that this is a unit cell which means you have this same unit cell up somewhere up here so this one you have here is also shared by another unit cell directly up it so which means this one is shared by is shared into two the same thing applies there. There's another unit cell down this side. So which means this one is also shared into two. So that is how you got one, one over two, one over two. So when you do all this, you get two roots. So for a one one zero plane, the planar density is one four r squared root root two. What? Why do we need linear and planar densities? Don't forget that when we started, I said we are going to look at how the structure of our crystal influences their behavior. So linear and planar density are important considerations when it comes to looking at sleep, the ability of our material to undergo plastic deformation. Your material will never undergo plastic deformation if there is no appropriately oriented plane and direction for the slip to occur. This is what we are. You can see this gliding. It is on a particular plane. This plane is what we call slip plane. And it will take place in a slip direction. So, your linear densities and planar density are necessary are important considerations are important parameters when you are looking at sleep when you are looking at the concept of plastic deformation in your material and sleep occurs in the most densely packed 
crystallography planes, and in those planes, along the directions having the greatest atomic packing, along the directions having the greatest atomic packing. Please note this. This is what determines whether your material is very ductile, whether your material is very brittle, whether your material is malleable, whether your material will give you enough extension or enough flow when you want to do plastic uh, deformation. Now, the next concept that we need to look at is Miller index or in pura form what people call Miller indices. Why do we need this? Don't forget, in our previous example, we saw the positioning of atoms in space with respect, with respect to the reference axis. The positioning is actually defined by, a param by parameters that we generally refer to as Miller index or a combination of them. We call it Miller indices. So these are, if you look at this, these we can take this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is a square. And along this, these are atomic position. These are atomic. This is this is two crystals. This is three. This is four. This is uh, one, two, three, four also, but in another direction. This is one, two, three, four in another direction. One, two, three, four in another direction. So all these points here, they have different representation as, as it were in our uh, XY, XY plane. So that is why we said Miller indices are groups of number used to, ex to express different planes and direction in crystal lattice. This is still a, this is still an eight by eight matrix. And you can have different positioning for our crystals as it were in, in all these environments. I will give a strong illustration in the, in the, so you have planes, and you have directions. For plane, you use brackets, conventional brackets. For family of planes, you use braces. And for direction, you use angular, angular brackets. And uh, for family of uh, Uh, for family of uh, you use angular bracket for family of directions you use uh, this form to represent to represent them. I will give an illustration here. Let's consider if you look at this. This is a parallel path. Let us take a uh, let's take uh, this. This, let's take this as an example in form of direction. If you look at this, this is one, two, one. So this, if you look at this, this is reference point. What is saying is that for us to get to point P, what you need to do is that move certain position on the this is x, this is y, this is z. So you move point, excuse me, the way this is arranged, this is taken to be point uh, axis x, axis y, axis z. So this is point 1 for x, this is point 2 for y, this is point. So that means you will move point x one point on this axis which is this okay you will move two points on y axis which is this point p here and you will move 
one point on the same axis. So if you look at it, it will just be somewhere around here. So you will now draw that line. Okay, this is one point on Z axis, you bring it here. This is one point on uh, X axis, but it is two on Y. You can see they ended it here, they call it Y naught. So you will now move it here, then you now take the direction says from your reference and then you, you draw it out. This is how they got one to one. Now, uh, uh, I need to make a point here. There is difference between directions and plane. In directions, this position is used direct. Whereas in plane, it is not used direct. Rather, you find the reciprocal. For instance, point one to one direction in plane will be one over one, one over two, one over one. So then that's it, that's it. You, you see it when it comes to the planes there. So the same, look, look at what we did with direction. We are now repeating it here. So you can now see, let us say point one. So you come here, you annotate it. Okay? For Y, it is point two. You come here, you annotate it. Point for z it is uh, point one you come here you are if you look at it very well if you look at this very well this is just x right this is y is there any in intersection of the z axis no we said instead of saying zero you call it infinity so if you want to represent place the intersect on uh, x axis it's midpoint is from the reference point between the reference point and the time so you can take that as if we take this as a if we take this cell edge as a and this intercept is occurring at midpoint so we can consider this to be a over two that is half of it okay now this is at y full so this is we can consider this to be point a right this is full a whereas there is nothing here so that is why you see one over half one over one and one over infinity so this is two one zero so the miller index is represented by generic term hkl and that is what you see here hkl without a separation between them for direction i forgot to mention that for direction it is u v w anywhere you use, you see a designation u v w please know that they are referring to direction and anywhere you see h k r please know that they are referring to a uh, plane these are further illustrations of what I was saying. You can see the angular bracket is different from the uh, normal. So this is what is used to represent direction. And you can have families of direction. This is family of direction. And you can have 111, 001. These are directions. Now, based on the arrangement of the axis and the angles between them we we are able to generate or we have the seven crystalline systems that we call cubic which is a equals to b b equals to c and all the included angles are equal at 90. we have hexagonal a and b are equal not equals to c such that alpha and beta are 90 but gamma is 120. in tetragonal all the angles are equals at 90 but only two sides are equal the third side c is not equal to the other two rhomboedra all the sides 
This one, all the side is like cubic. Roboedra is like cubic. All the sides are equal. All the angles are equal, but they are not 90. Autorhombic. <coughs> Unlike cubic, where all the sides are equal. In autorhombic, all the sides are not equal, but all the angles are equal at 90. Monoclinic. Uh, monoclinic. Oh, all the sides is like autorhombic. All the sides are not equal, but two angles. Alpha and gamma are equals at 90, which is not equals to beta. Triclinic, oh, no, all the angles, all the sides are not equal. So these are the seven crystal systems that define all existing materials that we have on the surface of the earth. Any material that you have we, belongs to one of these. If it is a crystalline uh, material, it will belong to one of these seven crystal system. Brave lattice. Brave lattice. Now, this is our last uh, part of, uh, this will be our last content in uh, topic one. We just spoke about the seven crystal system which is just a geometric form. Now, these atoms that we see here, they are very funny. They may not just be as simple as this. You may see them occupying other positions as well. So, there is need to establish the position occupied by atoms or molecules in the solid. And this is what we call Brave lattice. So Brave lattice is a subset of crystal lattice or crystal system. From seven crystal system, we get another subsystem that we call the Brave lattice. And this is in terms of <coughs> one. Is it occurring just at the lattice point? And the other bit, are we having it at all the faces? Are we having it at opposing faces, two opposing faces, just top and bottom, or front and back, but not around all through the faces? or is just at the center like we have in body center so when you combine all this all this you will now have what we call 14 fundamental lattices or that we call the 14 brave lattices and if we consider that each point is an atom we now have the crystal uh, structure these are uh, the 14 Brave lattices. You have the simple cubic, the body center cubic, the face center cubic, simple tetragonal, body center tetragonal, simple orthorhombic, body center orthorhombic, base center orthorhombic, face center orthorhombic, simple monolic, monoclinic, base center monoclinic. We have triclinic, we have roboedra, and we have just one hexagonal. So that is how we form the 40 Brave uh, uh, lattices. In this class, or uh, in this in this very class, in this very first class, we have learned about crystallography. We know what crystallography is, which is the study of the three the three-dimensional arrangement of atoms in space that enable our materials to exhibit a particular type of structure. We know that this structure is fundamental upon the bonding system that these materials exhibit, which enable us to characterize them either as conducting or non-conducting, either 
as crystalline or non-crystalline depending on the positioning of these atoms in space. And we also said materials exhibit crystal, uh, different crystal uh, structure and this crystal structure are dependent or are built upon the arrangement, the relationship between the lattice parameter ABC and the included angle alpha, beta, gamma. With this, we can determine, we can formulate the seven crystal system. Irrespective of whatever crystal system that we have, the atomic positions, the atomic positions are not the same across the planar or directional level. As a result of that, we treated the concept of linear density and planar density. We said our crystals are represented as sphere, as balls, and we use the volume of sphere or ball to determine, to represent or to symbolize the crystal such that at any point in time, we can determine the at the atomic packing factor that you have in that uh, in that system. We can also use that to determine or establish the linear density. We can also use that to establish the planar density. Why do we need these parameters? We need them because in material science, we are concerned about plasticity. In material science, we are concerned about plastic behavior of material. We are concerned about mechanical deformation. How does our material respond to load in, in order to shape them, in order to form them? And this concept is underpinned by what we call slip. And slip in materials occur in close pack planes, in, in, in the greatest, in the planes with the atomic packing, greatest atomic packing density, and in the in direction with the greatest uh, linear density as it were. So that is the, 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 the significance of looking at uh, atomic packing, uh, packing factor, looking at linear density, looking at planar density, in order to be able to characterize or discuss what happens when you subject your material to plastic uh, deformation. We went further to look at the relationship, the unit cell, how the unit cell is used to build up the larger uh, lattice as in the larger crystal system, which we have the seven crystal system. And from the seven crystal system, depending on the specific atomic position, whether at the, at the, just at the point, whether you have at the faces, all around the faces, or you have at two opposing uh, uh, faces, or you have at the center, uh, you, you can generate 14 Brave lattices. Uh, thank you for your time, for your attention. Uh, if you have uh, questions, if you, have, uh, if you need classification, you can always uh, reach out to me via our discussion forum, and then we, I will attend to all issues that you have. Thank you. Have a lovely day.